If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? This question that might seem simple or silly, it's actually something I thought about a lot. Somehow bringing it into the music realm is attributed to George Berkeley. Nobody really knows if it's true or not, but it was a question that actually appeared in a newspaper in 1883. And uh, the answer to that, which might seem weird, is no, it doesn't make any sound. Because what they reply in that article was that sound is the sensation excited in the ear when air moves. So basically, any sound, any perception of sound need an ear, need a human being that can actually perceive that, a human being or anything else that can perceive that. So uh, that's also sparkle more uh, question even getting into the realm of quantum physics. Uh, something similar was when Einstein asked to uh, Pace about this, like, do you really think that the moon exists only when you look at it? So this is very deep, deep stuff. And uh, I am definitely not a knowledge enough to go into the deep end of it. But I always thought about the role of an artist, and especially in this case, as a musician. And uh, I always thought if I produce art, or I think I'm producing art, but nobody uh, hear it or uh, come to a fruition of it, can I call myself an artist? Am I an artist? So this is the third video that I do uh, which is not strictly related to any demo or music, but it's related more uh, on the career around it. And uh, the last two that I did, one about how I make money with uh, music and the other one about minimalism went really well. And that really, really made me happy because I enjoy to start discussion about this. I think a lot about our role as human being uh, and of course, in my case, as an artist, as a musician. And I try to give it a sense. I always struggle with that. I always try to have a, a value in this world. And today I want to talk about the last thing, the last step. Uh, so this is a sort of trilogy. And uh, that is like, how can you define an artist? And what is the struggle of being an artist? And to me, this is the, the hardest one. And the hardest one, uh, because I keep having issue in defining myself and I keep being having issue uh, thinking of myself as an artist. And that's why I think uh, I need, or I need, there's some need to feel accepted. And if you feel accepted, then maybe you start feeling as an artist. I don't know, we'll go through that. There's five points I want to talk about. And as usual, these are my uh, two cents and uh, I love to share. It's definitely not the final truth. One negative side of this is like uh, all the video that I do, uh, I do it for free here in YouTube, but it's through your support that I can keep doing that. And when I talk about these things, there's nothing that I can really sell or uh, monetize on. So if you like what I'm doing, if you like what you're hearing, please consider to subscribe to this page and share this content, which is absolutely free. Uh, please consider to become a Patreon, where I do more in-depth uh, lesson and demos, and I also do one-on-one. -on -one. And also, uh, you can buy from the affiliate link down below. I will put something, but whatever you buy after you click the link will help me because I will get a tiny percentage. It doesn't cost anything to you, but it's really, really helpful. Also, you can buy my album, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of things you can do, and I really appreciate that. <clears throat> so, let's get into it. Are you a musician if nobody listens to your work? 
That's a question that I will reply at the end of this sort of dissertation. But yes, there is this question, like you can produce the most amazing music, but if nobody listens to you, are you a musician or are you an artist? Let's, we can broaden it. Um, there's a lot of people that I know that produce amazing pieces, but then you go, for example, to their Spotify, because right now, sadly, Spotify is a sort of uh, uh, mirror of what you're doing, and maybe they have five listening a month. Uh, I was one of those. I had for a long time, like 10 listening a month. Well, now I have a few thousands, which is great, but it's still very little because most of the amazing friends that I have in this business right now have tens of thousands of lists. And so I'm always comparing to the other and say like, am I really a musician? Am I really doing something valuable? And here is the struggle. I always feel that to call myself an artist, I need to be accepted as a peer in a certain community. And this is and will be the hardest struggle that I have in my life. I have few friends, people that I can call close friends, that are very, very well-established artists. They are amazing. And probably they are the ones that never, ever listened to my music. Uh, this break my heart, but also made me think like sometimes you cannot really rely on friends because I feel, and I always felt, that the closest they are, the more granted uh, they consider you. And so they don't do that step on what this guy really do. And I realized that uh, in the community I am, the less friends I have with people, the less they are interested in what I do. The closest I become, and I guess the less curiosity there is. And so things got a little lost in translation. I don't know. I feel though that my entire struggle again is to get accepted by peers. And how you get accepted, I think that the way you get accepted is adding value to the pool. In the music business, this can be done in many ways. My main interest would be to create beautiful music that would be accepted by my peers, that would be loved by my peers. And this is happening somehow. There's great artists that I deeply uh, respect that love what I'm doing. But you can do that through other things. You can add value by creating content, like I do also, and like a lot of other people do. So not everybody of us can produce amazing music. A lot of people can teach music. And this is interesting because you don't have to be an artist, a famous artist, to teach to famous artists. I have few of my followers that are huge, big, big artists, people with hundreds of thousands of followers, millions of listening. And somehow I influence their decision, what, what they bought, what they do. And when I realized that, it was like a a beautiful slap in the face. It was like, how in the hell this amazing artist can be influenced by me, by, by me, by what I'm doing? Uh, so that kind of reframe all uh, the way I think about these things. So I'm adding value in the pool in a different way. Of course, I would like to be those guy on stage in front of thousands and thousands of people that maybe will come or maybe will never come. And that is the struggle. That is something I have to make peace with. Otherwise, my life will be always filled with some kind of level of sadness or despair. And uh, maybe that it's also a push to make more art, to make better art. And maybe it's so rooted in the way I am that I could never, I will never be able to eradicate it. So make peace make peace with it. It's something that I'm learning and I probably will learn my entire life. But are you an artist only if others perceive you like that? That's another hardcore question because uh, a lot of 
self-development uh, teaching says that don't uh, uh, rely on what other thinks about you, otherwise you will never be happy. You will never be happy. But at the same time, for this kind of job, for this kind of line of work, you have to rely on what other people say. If I do content, if I do music and no one likes it, well, how can I survive with that? Then is where maybe you can divide the art part and the work part. When like, maybe you're not an artist, but you are a crafter and you craft something for some kind of use. But it's really hard to separate these things and they kind of are uh, mixed together. So this again, it's something I can try to reply at the end. But let's talk about uh, five points that I kind of was the, 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 the points which I based all of my ideas of being an artist, being a musician. So number one, first, you need to work on yourself, on your self-perception and what you put out in the world. Luckily, I grew up in a moment when there was no social, there was no iPhone, there was no internet. So a lot of what I was doing was uh, relying on my self-perception and what my teachers was telling me. So back in the day when I was a kid, I couldn't learn through YouTube. I had to pay some teacher, spend time with him and listen to him and hear what I he was saying about my skills. So my first teacher was kind of terrible, was a jazz person and not terrible as a teacher, but he didn't click with me. I hated it. I hate fusion jazz. So it was, I was a kid. I wanted to do Sweet Home Alabama. And that's what happened. Then my second uh, teacher, Franco Cercanti, guitar player, uh, he started me, okay, I'm going to teach you Sweet Home Alabama. And then uh, click like, now I'm having fun. But uh, after that, I uh, studied photography and uh, back in school, I remember the teacher that I love more, someone like Viviana Gravano, that was a photography teacher, history of photography, and she was giving uh, like, um, she was rating our work as a photographer. And uh, they were always saying, don't ever put things out which is not yourself, you are not proud of. There's such a easiness right now to consider yourself, I'm ready, I can just publish everything. And today, a lot of people do that. So there's an ocean of uh, things coming out every single day. So it's really hard to have things of value. So the first one that has to work it's yourself. You need to value what you're doing. You need to uh, consider yourself in a certain way and be really, really critical about what you're doing. This is something I've been teach over and over until I become so self-aware about what I was doing that I could know when something was ready to be shared. It's a uh, it's something I feel we should all work to make also everything uh, more interesting because otherwise we keep putting out stuff that is not of value. Of course, again, that is really rooted on what you think about yourself, what you think about your work and what you can do uh, better. It's one of the biggest struggles, like do good thing uh, and be proud of what you are doing. So never be approximative, uh, never put things out that are not that good. Be true and honest. These are the laws I base my entire existence in whatever I do. So that was point one. Let me turn the page so I go and I don't forget anything. Pine point two. Decide what you want to be and what you want to do with your heart. Because there's people that create just for the sake of creating, which is a beautiful thing, which put you, 
put away and, and destroy all the pressure. But other people like me enjoy when others listen. I love to share. I love to uh, put all of my things out there. So that is important because if you just love doing music as a meditational uh, procedure or, or just for yourself, it's something, you love your work, then you come home and you just play for yourself, then your entire journey will be different than mine. My journey has always been, I want to be accepted, I want to put things out that has value, so that of course put a lot of pressure in what I'm doing. But I guess sitting with yourself and talking about that, it's important. One example, when I was a photographer, uh, I've been in photography for more than 10 years, but at a certain moment, I realized that I didn't have what other photographers have. And it wasn't the skill, the technical skill. It was the networking skill. I didn't like at all the environment. I hated it. I hate the way you have to deal with art director, with models, with all the, uh, how eph um, I would say ephemeral, uh, how vain a lot of stuff it is. And of course, I'm not talking about for all the photography and all photographers. Some people love the fact that you produce something that lasts for a season or for a week. I completely was not happy about that. So I sit with myself and I decided, and I, and I took me out of it. And I decided from now on, I'm not going to be a photographer anymore. I'm going to be a musician. There was a, the retouching phase. So I was a retoucher for a while. It was very hard. It was very hard to give up on a dream. It was a very hard to give up on a title that I give myself to be a photographer, to be cool as a photographer. Uh, but it was f extremely freeing. So I decided what I wanted to be and move on. So the third point is about friends. Uh, it's about the fact that uh, I talk a little about before. Don't rely too much on friends because there's this way of saying never meet your heroes, right? I met some time artists that I consider hero and it was heartbreaking because once I met them, I realized I did not like them as human being. And that is always like heart shattering. I find out that even the opposite is an interesting consideration. It's like I met some of my hero, one of my best friends here in, uh, in Berlin is a musician that I deeply, deeply respect and love. But I think he, he or she, I don't want to point that out who is he or she, uh, never listened to what I do. So I notice, because you notice when you talk about, right, that when somebody has no clue what you're doing and maybe look at you like, oh, here's another one trying to be like that. I find that happening a lot with other artists. I try to uh, be the opposite of that. I consider everybody interesting. I think that curiosity is really important because you never know what can happen when you are open to other people, when you are curious, when you ask, when you show love. Um, but of course, each one is different. So don't rely on your friend to be the main fuel for what you are doing. And actually, again, I said before, the more close you are with somebody, the more they give you for granted. So it's just like, it's hard even to make your friend to come to your concert. I, when I was in a band and we had quite good success, I remember whenever we play in our small town, it was the hardest time because all of the friends say, oh, we don't really care, it's just Federico, right? So it's a silly way to, f it's a s simple thing. And, and, and I think about a, a lot of that. Think about point four that I'm giving you now, not friend, but point four is like build a community. That is where you want to put your eggs. Uh, building a community has been for me life changing. How did I build? There's many ways you can do. I started with socials. I was in New York. I was uh, 
during pandemic, so I was forced to be home and I built a community. I wanted to have people listen to me, people uh, to know about my music and then it's how it started. I built little by little with a lot of effort every day working on it until it became something amazing. Uh, I met so many people through that and I keep meeting amazing people through that. So that's one way. Another way would be uh, share studio space like I'm doing here in Berlin. First time I have a studio in a community that share music. Everybody's doing music here. So it's pretty obvious that every day I meet like-minded people. That's what you want. Like-minded people that little by little accept you, love you and bring you in their world. Then go to concert, go to event. You need to physically meet people once you meet them physically, uh, things are easier. Uh, the, the, the big artist that I met here, someone I met through Instagram or some other, I just went to them and then uh, told them what I was doing, be open with them and a friendship started. And then uh, show support. This is another thing. So whenever you support another artist, buy their album, uh, become their Patreon, um, but whatever I tell you all the time, try to support me. You will be in the mind of that person. The people that support me, I am always there for them. And it's not because it's a do ut des thing. It's just like these people are showing me love. And then it's automatically I want to show love for them. Because I'm here thanks to them. I'm here just thanks for to, to these people that believe in what I'm doing. So I will be there for them. And this was my like four way to get into, to build a community. Now the fifth point, and then we close, it's just the uh, harshest things you can do to yourself, which I do constantly, comparison. Compare yourself to other artists, it could be the worst things you do. I do that constantly. I hear an artist that maybe do trap music and I say, damn, I want to do that because it's cool. And then I maybe I lose a week trying to do what this artist is doing, losing a week because it's pointless. That's not myself. But also when I see people that do my kind of things, for example, I might do a, a live set and then I see an amazing artist and uh, uh, remind me, I, I use amazing too much. But anyway, and I see this concert and I say, oh, that is so much better than what I do. And I keep forgetting that there's other people that see, look at me the same way, see what I'm doing and listen to my music, say, this is amazing how this guy is doing that. So I realize all of us are chasing some other and, and this is so silly, so heartbreak shattering, so hard to deal with. So what I'm trying to learn, and I'm still doing learning, it's figure out how to use jealousy in a good way. Jealousy could be good. Jealousy in a way like you see somebody else and say, I want to learn and be as good as that other person. But use it as a fuel. And you can use it in a fun way. You can contact the person that you uh, love and ask them, hey, I love what you're doing. If they perceive that you don't want to copy them, but you want to learn and you are ready to share your part too, then they will be open. Everybody's open to me because they know that I share everything I know. I never kept any secret. I don't want secret. Secret is stupid. Well, it is, it is stupid to me. Yeah, like, like there's no reason why you keep secret because I learn. I didn't invent anything. I learned from others. And the way I learn, sometimes I figure out by myself, sometimes I asked. And so you ask me thing, I will tell you. I'm me, you, you will never be me. So that's the meaning of that. It's just like, don't compare yourself. You hear that this so many times, again, self-development thing. You are yourself. Nobody will ever be able to be yourself. There's a lot of people that follows me that buy the same exact things that I use, but they will never do the same music. Maybe they, they can do interesting music, 
better is hard to say. There's no better or worse music. It's just what you like. And so this lead to the never-ending struggle of my life. Never feel good enough. I'm preparing a live set for my debut Saturday, which I'm super excited. I'm doing something that it's good, but I'm always feel like, oh, maybe this is not good enough. Maybe they will not like it. And this will never go away. You have to live with that. I know some artists that are so self-confident that they don't give up them and they just go with it. They have fun. And I'm so, so jealous of them. <laughs> that is some jealousy, that real jealousy. But I have always this harsh feeling, this worriness, this nervousness, but I think it's good. Because uh, as I mentioned in a post recently, to me, a live show should be excitement and it should be nervousness, should be the fact that you might do something wrong. So that excitement build up and I want to have the chance to make things wrong because if going on stage would be just to press a button and then everything it's easy ah that's not gonna be interesting I need to have something I can do wrong so it will keep me pushing and doing better and better and better so let's close this video let's reply to the question if a musician plays in a forest and nobody's there to listen to him. Is him or her a musician? I think, yes, it is. And that's because the same guy that is playing there is the one that will get excited by what he's doing. So I feel it's all rooted to the idea that you have about yourself. I feel to call yourself a musician, to call yourself an artist, you need to develop a series of tools, necessary tools that uh, let you judge yourself for what you are really doing. This is a lifetime of learning. But at a certain moment, a certain point, you get in a place, you get in a space where you are producing something valuable and you will know. Then that doesn't mean that you will stop growing, you will stop looking for a growth, but you will feel this is good. What came out from all of this speech is like being an artist. It's being in a solitary place. You'll be alone a lot. You will be judging yourself. You will be figuring out if what you're doing is good or not. And nobody, nobody will be there to help. Not because people will not try to say you are doing good, but because you won't listen to them. In the end, the only voice you will listen, it's yourself. So my advice is what I said, develop the necessary tools to judge yourself with an open mind, with an open heart and good luck to you. I'll see you next week.